Good morning. I'm William Dorset. Uh, uh, 807 on our Good Morning Antigua Bobby the Clock for this lovely Wednesday. Hope that you're having a good start to your day. And with me on set this morning, we have Cordley George, chairman for the Mango Fest uh, Committee for 2015. So we know that that event is indeed on. We'll get to hear from him today as to their plans and what to expect and the special features uh, that will be attached to the Mango Festival for 2015. Good morning to you, Cordley. How are you doing, my man? Morning. Very well, thank you. <clears throat> Just give us a roundup on what happened last year at Mango Fest 2014. Well, due to um, one or two logistical reasons and so forth, we were not able to really hold as much of the events that we would normally do. Uh, as you realize, we had re-registration and we had quite a number of other things relating to um, uh, the political situation in Antigua last year. So we, we, we slightly curled back a little bit on, on some of the activities. But um, this year now, um, we're going forward now, it's, um, we're going into a 10th year of uh, the Mango Festival. Okay. And we really want to make sure that we have as much um, activities as possible and to highlight all the things that we've done over the years as well to make sure that Mango stays on top. You, Chairman of the, festival, the Mango Fest Committee, uh, speak about a little bit about the structure. Has there been a structural change? Are uh, any new committee members to support you and uh, put this thing together? Yeah, well, at this particular point, we're still in the process of actually getting all the teams together, really, and so forth. But normally, it's a joint collaboration between the Ministry of um, Agriculture and Tourism, and it revolves on a, on a two-yearly basis. And this year, it falls to the Ministry of Tourism. And uh, we're therefore taking all the necessary steps to make sure that um, in the 10th year of um, <coughs> the Mango Fest activities, that it'll be a successful one as it has always been in the past. And um, we're making sure that uh, one of the pivotal part of the Mango Fest is to actually highlight local food and local entrepreneurships as well as um, the participation of our young people in an activity that is really geared towards the tourism sector of Antigua as also to increase the, the level of activities of our farmers and so forth. One of the things that would have been one of the uh, big attractions for the Mango Fest would have been the culinary competition, I think, for the weird. You have some of our top or best chefs on the island participating and competing to be able to do something, uh, as I say, whip up a dish uh, that would have, of course, all, all, all the, the, the mango in it. Uh, what's the plans for that this year? Well, again, that I think that that normally plays the most important part of the actual Mango Fest. The two-day event that we have in Christian Valley normally is the culmination of all the activities, generally speaking, whereby we have a lot of tourist activities there. But the, um, the, the, the activity with the chef, that is a very important one because here you have all the top chefs on the island um, from all the hotels. They compete or vie at Dutchman's Bay, at the Hospitality Training Institute, which really is, is, a, is a remarkable thing because we have some of the top chefs in the world right here. Talk about Nonsuch Bay, Sugar Ridge, Jumbi Bay, and so forth, Jolly Beach, and the rest who are competing for um, uh, the, 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 the top prize. Um, uh, when we, uh, what do we, uh, how do we utilize the, the, that branding or bragging rights, the top chefs, being able to attach them to our Mango Festival. Uh, what is the Ministry of Tourism or even collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture doing <coughs> to be able to use that as a marketing tool to be able to get the word out that not only can persons participate in the Mango Festival here as one of our national events, but to be able to attract persons to come to Antigua to visit or uh, to experience our, our tourism? Well, normally, during, during the advent of the whole event, we normally have all of our, our tourist organizations in all the countries that we have offices that we inform them well in advance uh, through the website, not just the government website, but um, Antigua Nice and others such as that. We, we advertise it and um, we, we, we do as much possible promotion along the lines with um, our partners overseas, the um, Tourism Authority as well. So it's an event really that has been promoted over the years and um, for visitors so that the hotels would know about it. The cruise ships from time to time when they dock here, uh, we have them actually coming along to the, the festival. In fact, uh, last year was one of those times when we had a massive amount of people coming on that day from the hotels as well as the cruise ships that were visiting. So really and truly the marketing is really done uh, on a very regular basis and on a timely basis so that hotels can participate with some of their guests sampling some of our, the, the good things that we have in Antigua. Uh, for Antiguans, uh, it's natural for us and I think we've gotten accustomed uh, to be able to just pick a mango, wash it, 
eat it, consume it, enjoy it. Uh, for persons who are not able to get access to it in that way, uh, what are we doing in terms of our agro-processing, uh, packaging this uh, mango, creating a brand out of it from the Ministry of Agriculture or even other uh, persons, or other entrepreneurs that may be into agro-processing? How are we packaging? Uh, do we have the potential, uh, Cordley, if you can answer this, in terms of really, uh, in terms of our local produce, in terms of our production, do we have sufficient uh, just for uh, national consumption or the surplus to be able to export this product? Well, you, you, you've asked a very good question there and it can be answered in many parts. First of all, is always the amount that we have could always be exported. We just don't have the mechanism in place to be able to do so. Uh, the next question is the agro-processors. Well, they've been very prolific over the years in terms of making use of the mango, whether it's green or ripe, and uh, making jams and other things like that and so forth, and then accessing it to the people. Once mango is available, readily available, it's available in some supermarket from time to time, as well as on the street. You can always get it from the street. And um, at last year in particular, a lot of mangoes were just there literally given away. And uh, we have to um, give credit to those people who um, do a serious job with it in terms of making it readily available. And as you know, mango is used by quite a number of our agro-processors, which we really want to really make sure that those entrepreneurs can make benefit out of it. But in terms of the export potential, it's seasonal, but once it's there, once we can get the infrastructure right, and it's quite possible, easily done, airline airlift out of Antigua, we can do it, but we need the kind of will of a lot of folks to really get involved with that aspect of it. Uh, how is the Central Marketing Corporation uh, networking with the Agricultural Ministry in terms of um, uh, this product, or uh, this produce, uh, mangoes, or even other produce that may be uh, produced right here in Antigua and Barbuda that we have in surplus uh, for distribution? Is that office, uh, the office charged with uh, distribution or export, or they just are to manage on the local front. Bring some clarity. Well, right now I feel that um, the, 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 the central market and corporation that it stands really right now is struggling itself in, in internal matters and in terms of marketing local produce at the moment. I mean, farmers at one time used to depend on the central market and corporation, but they themselves are competing very much with farmers in general. When mangoes are available, then from the Christian Valley point of view and the Cates Bay point of view, then mangoes are sent there to be sold in a normal way. But then again, you have to know how to mix it. When you have plenty, you drop the price and so forth. That's the normal way things work out. But Central Market Incorporation really needs to look at itself right now and see how best it can serve the public at the moment instead of competing with the public. Okay, so uh, there has to be a different shift of their focus uh, to be so. able to get a better result or to be able to uh, thrive within the economy that is becoming a little bit more competitive. Um, mangoes, uh, the branding uh, this year, is there a theme uh, attached to this year's event quite yet or are you still in the preparatory well, stage? We, this is this is just a public um, announcement for, for right now, but most certainly we have several ideas on the table at the moment. But as I said, what we're trying to do, we, we, we're pushing um, the chefs this year to really come up with some creative um, uh, ways of making use of not just the mangoes, which really is what we, we promote. Uh, I'm really proud to say that since I've been with the Mango Fest um, team is that over the years we've seen other islands in the Caribbean sort of um, took the initiative and rode with it and have sort of um, uh, really done remarkably well. Trinidad for instance and Grenada and um, we can say that they've taken some of the ideas which we've initiated in, in, in the past. And we're hoping really that with the chefs that we can take this, um, the culinary competition to another level so that people can see that this is how our chef can really perform in their own rights. Speaking about the chef and the artistic uh, creations that they be able to bring forth, utilizing our mango, you don't mention uh, for this year's focus of the Mango Fest competition, uh, we're going to be dealing with local food. Uh, when we speak about local food, we know, of course, we're going to put a check by mango. What else can we add to that uh, menu? Well, we have yam. I mean, uh, I must say that yam is one of those things that Antiguan people really love. And we have a special yam, the local yam to Antigua. You can never have enough of that. I've suggested to the people at Diamond that whatever they have at the moment, stop selling right now so you can have more production for next year so that we'll have more availability of it. The yam can be mashed, it could be saved, and it can be used as a substitute for um, Irish potato in many ways. 
You can use it in, in, in your dishes when you have in your salads, etc., etc. Uh, we have the sweet potato, really and truly. Um, there's a glut of it at the moment, at the moment. And um, we have the pumpkin, <coughs> also quite a serious glut of that at the present time. And it refers back to the po point I made earlier on in terms of making sure that we have outlets regular outlets fit and so forth. Once we have plenty, this import substitution can really work in the way it's supposed to work, but it doesn't seem to work like that simply because people are not really slashing the prices accordingly. So as a result of that now, we always have these things, but there are ways and means that we can get out of this. And we're working very much together with the tourism department and the uh, agriculture department to ensure that ideas put on the table can be practical for the folks out there who really want to make sure that we have good food on the table. Now, our business dynamics are, uh, seems to be uh, something that's ringing in my mind when you speak about uh, slashing the prices. When I say that, uh, is there a, a decision that has to be made or, or instructions maybe from the ministry or a cabinet decision that has to come into place to be able to give persons the instruments to be able to uh, make that sort of determination? Uh, we have a, 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 a glut on the market for, uh, let's say, an example, pumpkin or the yam or whatever it is. Uh, for them to adjust the price, do we have to uh, wait three years for when we would have already rotten those yams? to then know that we need to adjust the price? Can there be a dynamic situation where it's a f fluctuating pricing based on the demand and the supply? No, it's a simple solution, really. Once you have uh, access to the um, demand, you you just cut the price automatically. Well, why is the price then staying at one, 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 one uh, staying stagnant? Well, the thing is, I can't understand why people don't really just do the right thing. Again, some of the hotels really, they would prefer to deal with um, an association rather than an individual. Okay. So you have farmers backing up their trucks sometimes, um, you know, competing with one another. Instead of having one price that you can go and deal with some of the hotels, this hotels association, for instance. So what we have to do really is to sort of stop talking about gluts and see how best we can get it down, slash your prices accordingly, simply because you're just going to waste in the field. Right? So as a result of that, uh, most hotels, you, you could only have so much um, pumpkin soup on your menu at any one time. All right? So what we have to do really is to do deals in a way that's going to be beneficial over the long run till we can stabilize things and so forth. Now, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed at um, the the results that we get from the St. Croix visit on an annual basis. We go to St. Croix, we win all the prizes, but there's no follow-up. We're supposed to have a situation whereby we can get pumpkins, potatoes, pineapples, everything to the supermarket in those areas. We win the prizes, but we don't send nothing down as a follow-up and so forth. It don't make any sense, you see? So I think smart business people should now go to the possibility of finding ways and means of getting it to the other islands as well. This is a serious crisis at the moment. Well, we hope that uh, all the offices that are attached and have interest into our food production here in Antiguan Barbuda will indeed uh, utilize their potential and the opportunities that can be had with distribution and proper storage facilitation for our produce that we have so we can have less wastage. Uh, thank you for coming this morning. Just give us a roundup again on uh, Mango Fest. It comes up in June this year? Uh, no, we start in, in July. July. The chef competition will shortly be announced in terms of the times in July and the main event will be also a week before the actual launch of the carnival. Simply because we need to have people who are going to be here during the carnival session as opposed to waiting after the carnival and we want to capitalize on the fact that when mangoes are there that's when mango fest is really most um, required not after the mango start to go out people want to have an abundance of mango for this occasion sounds good so, thank you very much uh, i guess the next time you come you will bring some of the edward and what's the other one uh pinero pinero uh, julie julie yeah, right hackett Hack it. Belly full. The belly full. Right. I Quite used to live in those when I was a little boy. Yeah, well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so we hope to see you uh, bring a bundle the next time you come to give us an update as to what's happening in terms of our Mango Fest. We've been speaking to Cordley George, uh, chairman for the Mango Fest uh, committee for 2015. And of course, he's looking for our support on a national front to be able to make sure that this event is successful. And chefs, get yourself uh, lined up, get some great ideas and put them on those plates so we can have a great competition come Mango Fest 2015. I'm William Dorset. This is Good Morning Antigua Barbuda. We'll be right back.